Well, uh, I think I've met everyone so far, but I'm Graham Thomas, one of our deputy directors here at Tennessee Achieves. Um, what I have prepared for you here today, we've got a little presentation that's going to kind of walk initially through some of the, we're going to zoom out a little bit and do some statewide data, and then we're going to dive into the Tipton County data that we have. Um, I will tell you, being newer to Tipton County, we don't have quite as much um, robust, robust data on your county quite yet. So you're going to see some retention data in here. We don't have graduation data yet. Um, it takes us three years working in a county to get that three year graduation rate. So we're just not quite there, but we're going to give you everything that we have. Um, that being said, as we're walking through this, Robin and your team there, Amanda, if you have questions, please, we got a small group today, stop me, ask me if there's something that looks funny or something that you want more information on, um, just let me know. We wanna make sure we get your, your questions answered. Um, I think probably everyone's familiar, but we have an advisory council um, in each county. And so, you know, really designed to do a couple of things, provide us guidance prior to come to Tipton County a couple of years ago. It wasn't a place that we were super familiar with. And so providing us guidance to help find those mentors and be supportive of our program, but also to have this layer of accountability so that you can give us feedback on what's working well, what's not working well, because we know that what's working in Tipton County may not work in Shelby County, may not work in Dyer County. So we want to make sure that um, we're serving your students to the best of our, our ability here. Just a real quick reminder, Tennessee Achieves is a 501c3 nonprofit. We're currently operating Tennessee Promise in 90 of the state's 95 counties. We launched in just one county um, under the leadership of Randy Boyd, who we just talked about a few minutes ago, Mike Ragsdale and Bill Haslam um, in Knox County in 2008. And since then, we've worked with more than 440,000 students. 71,000 volunteers and annually we're working with 600 um, plus high schools and 67 colleges across Tennessee. This next slide kind of dives into what we call the core components of Tennessee Achieves. So the first three have been with us really since this program was just an idea on a whiteboard. Tennessee Promise now providing the last dollar scholarship, meaning that students can attend one of our 13 community colleges, our 27 Tennessee Colleges of Applied Technology, as well as those 27 four-year universities for two and a half years tuition free. Each student that applies for Tennessee Promise in the 90 counties where we work is paired with a volunteer mentor. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a few minutes. And then our students get back eight hours of community service. When we launched Knox Achieves 13 years ago, the scholarship portion of the program was privately funded. We had the mentors making sure students were successful and so we thought that it was really important that our students continue that tradition of giving back and we continue to think that today. One of the really exciting things that we've recently learned about the community service opportunity is we survey students when they submit it and 96% of our students um, are reporting back that they really enjoy the community service hours, um, which was higher than we thought it would be. So we were really excited to see that students are finding this to be a valuable opportunity as well. Couple of things that we have added since. One are our two summer programs. So we now operate um, a summer bridge program. We operate that at all 13 community colleges across Tennessee. It is a three week program designed to help prepare students academically. So students that participate in this program are not testing into college level coursework in at least one subject. So that can be math, writing, or yeah, math, reading, or writing. Um, some of them need all three, some of them just need one or two, but they come for three weeks, they do an hour of reading, writing, and math every day, and at the end, they take the placement tests. Really excited to announce that this year we had an 89% success rate in that program. So 89% of the students that participated either improved their scores or tested into college level coursework. Um, we know in a year where students were in and out of class. And then we have now seen that test scores were down across the board. Um, we think that is hopefully gonna be really impactful for those students. Second program that we have been operating for a few years now is called Summer Institute. We actually operate this in the urban core of Memphis. This year we had 29 students participate in this program. It is essentially the bridge program on steroids. Instead of three weeks, it is six weeks. Instead of three hours a day, it's six or seven hours a day and it's actually credit bearing. So students come in and students that participate in this program do require all three of those subjects, the learning support classes. 
So they come in and they knock out all their learning support classes. And with the new co-requisite model that TBR has implemented, they can, <clears throat> they can actually earn up to nine hours of college credit. Um, probably the best news that we've had in a long time, um, we had a 100% success rate with this program this year. All 29 students have started the program. That's great. They started, they finished, they all knocked out their um, learning support and earned nine hours of college credit. So they were going to start a full semester behind and now they will be a full semester ahead. So <laughs> really excited about that program. We've tried to grow it outside of Memphis the last couple of years into Nashville and Knoxville. We've not had a whole lot of luck, but you know, this past year. So what, which school in Memphis is that at Southwest? It's at Southwest. We have identified, um, originally it was 11 inner city high schools. I think it's now up to about 20. Um, so the students have to come from one of those 20-ish high schools that we've identified. Um, about 90% of them are eligible for a federal Pell Grant, so they're low income. Um, and 100% of them identified as a minority population. So our most at-risk students um, participating in this program and 100% success. That's outstanding. A couple of years ago when we ran this, um, we didn't have a 100% success rate. It was in the 90s. Um, but every single one of the students that participated in the program started in the fall and came back in the spring. So we had a 100% fall to spring retention, which, you know, you don't get that anywhere, much less with this specific population. So um, it's shown a lot of promise. We'd like to grow that program for sure. And then the final little piece on this slide here is our new coaching model. I say new, it's been with us for several years now, but we have identified our most at-risk students across the state. And what we have found in Tennessee is that, unfortunately, even though we have made college tuition free, our low-income students in Tennessee don't go to rates, you know, go to college at rates as high as their peers. And when they go, they don't graduate at rates as high as their peers. So we are now, Dalton is on the call with us here today. Dalton has been a um, complete coach with us for several years. But our coaches are reaching out to this population. They're essentially picking up where the mentors leave off. So they're getting to know the students um, we have taken this group of students that was our lowest achieving, and they are now actually outpacing our general population in terms of fall to fall retention. So showing a lot of promise there. It's something I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes that we hope to expand. A few more slides just on our reach. I mentioned that we're in 90 counties, 74 of which are considered to be rural. At 35 are considered to be at risk or distressed, according to the Department of Economic and Community Development, working in 601 high schools in those 90 counties. So those are all the public, private, and then the homeschool cooperatives in those 90 counties. We have 67 college partners, and then you can get a breakdown of where it is that our students are attending. Almost 80% of them at a community college, fairly even split there between the TCATs and the four-year school. No, you guys have a TCAT right there in your backyard. Uh, we would certainly love to see more students enrolling in those uh, TCAT programs because the success rate is just so high. Um, but that's currently where we are landing. A couple more kind of statewide stats here. So we are annually working with more than 60,000 high school seniors. When you couple that with the college students we're working with, it comes out to about 90,000 students that we're working with each and every year. We recently pulled some data and we were, for those of us that have been here for since the beginning, since Knox County, when we were working with 490 students, this, it, it kind of pinch yourself, but excited to wake up and do this work every day. 89% of all high school seniors in Tennessee come through our program. Um, when you couple that with the work that the AIRS program is doing, well over 90% of students across Tennessee are applying for Tennessee Promise, but 89% of all seniors in Tennessee come through Tennessee Achieves. 78% of all first-time freshmen at the community college come through Tennessee Achieves, and 86% of all Tennessee community college graduates come through Tennessee Achieves. Again, just kind of overwhelmed with that number, but really excited to wake up every day and continue to think about how we move the needle for these students across Tennessee. 56% of the students that we are working with are eligible for a Pell Grant, which means that they are low income. 40% of which uh, self-report as first generation. I'll tell you this number, I think skews a little bit low. First, there's not like a great definition of what exactly is a first generation college student. 
Second, it's self-reported on their FAFSA. When you're looking at the fact that about 44% of adults in Tennessee have a post-secondary credential, the fact that only 40% of the next generation is reporting this first generation seems low. Um, seems like it would be closer to that 50, 55. Um, so I think that number is a little bit low, but that's what they're telling us. And then we recently pulled some data to see what are, what are our students majoring in? And we were very excited to see that more than half of them, 51%, are majoring in either a health or STEM related field, 27% um, in a health field. Uh, we know that there is a nursing shortage across Tennessee. We know that STEM fields are in demand. I think the exciting thing about this data point is that it means our students are going to go earn a credential, they're gonna be desirable for our employers and they're gonna find meaningful work. Um, so we were really excited to see that particular stat. And then at the bottom here, you see just some general cost figures, $32 million annually is what the state is paying for Tennessee Promise. That comes out to about $1,100 per student. And then we operate on a $2.5 million budget that is um, mostly privately funded, a few state dollars, but the vast majority of our budget is privately funded there. Let's take a look at our local data. First stat that we measure in every single county is our FAFSA filing rate. And you can see that Tipton County outpaced the state this year. Two years ago, our statewide FAFSA filing rate was 90%. You know, we saw a dip, I think it's directly correlated to the fact that students weren't in the school building specifically. And I wanted to ask, is that's the most recent, but is, is that for this past school year? This is a class of 2021, yes. Okay. You know, I, our, our numbers- yeah, We had a hard percent. time finding, we worked hard to find those students. Mm -hmm. You know, we had challenges that we've never had before, right? Students, I, I don't know exactly what it looked like in Tipton County, but you know, in Memphis and actual students weren't in school. Uh, during the FAFSA yeah, we season. were we were better because our schools did stay open four days a week but mm -hmm. there was a virtual option so we had about 30 percent we had about 70 percent on campus four days a week so that helped us tremendously you know Absolutely. we were in a better position than many of the school systems but that 30 percent just kind of we we lost them yeah it's tough I mean you know, our counselors do amazing work all across the Tennessee, all across Tennessee to keep this rate high. And when you can't go pull them out of class and sit down with them or help answer their questions, it's it's not unexpected um, that we had a little dip. You could probably argue that we only only dipping four points was pretty good. Yeah, I think that's we're, right. We're gonna we're gonna work to make sure we get back up to that 90, but numbers here in Tipton look good. You can see the community service numbers. We crossed um, statewide to almost 3.4 million. Randy goes out and tells people that means that we are the largest community service organization in Tennessee. We do not know that that is true, um, but no one has told us otherwise. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll claim it until they tell us otherwise, right? And then you can see that more than 14,000 of those hours have been completed um, locally. So Robin, hopefully you're seeing that around the county. You're seeing it in your schools with your nonprofits. Um, it is a number that we're really we talking. are we get a lot of calls on you know we try to make sure they know when we refer them to your website because you've got it all listed there you know where they can volunteer you know so many volunteer opportunities but um we we talk to a lot of those kids and, and they are and and reflective of what you were saying earlier i think they really enjoy it good yeah it's a number that we're proud of not the goal of the program but it is um, a nice offshoot of the program for sure so this next slide is probably our most important. Again, we don't have graduation data on your students yet. We just haven't been here long enough and we don't have the student data from when Ready um, was operating. So we don't know what the graduation rate looks like. But this is 2000, class of 2019 data here. So you had 726 students apply, 200 of which enrolled using Tennessee Promise. And then your fall to fall retention rate was 68%. So of the 200 that started, 68% of them came back for their sophomore year. Hopefully when we come back and do this presentation next year, we will have that three-year graduation um, data. I will tell you statewide for us, it's 35% um, three-year graduation rate. And as soon as we know what your three-year graduation rate is, we will include it in the presentations. But 
everything here. And look, looks are good. you gonna? You'll send us this this presentation. Yes, we're recording this, um, and we're okay. gonna blast it out to everyone. Or I can also just send you the PowerPoint if you would like. I'd like to have that information. Yeah, let me. Thank you. Make a little note here. All right. Next, we've got a few, again, we're kind of zooming out here for a second, back to statewide Tennessee Achieves outcomes. You can see that for Tennessee Achieves students at any eligible Tennessee Promise institution, our first year retention rate is 67% versus a 53% for the first time full-time freshman at community college, and that's general community college population outside of the scope of Tennessee Achieves and with our Tennessee Achieves students. And then you see at any college that our students go to, they have a 74%. So these are students that are going using Promise, but also the students that aren't. The ones that are going to the University of Memphis and Martin and MTSU and UT, they aren't getting the financial benefit, but they were given a mentor. We helped them with their FAFSA. They got reminders from, from us. So not receiving the dollars, but did go through the program in some capacity. And then you see our six-year graduation rate is 51%. These are students that, uh, two things here, went to Dyersburg State, Jackson State, Southwest, and got their associate's degree and either entered the workforce or transferred. These are also your students that went to community college maybe for a semester, knocked out, or a year, knocked out their core classes, transferred on without earning their associate's degree, but did earn a bachelor's degree. When you're looking at 51%, it feels like that's a hard number to celebrate, but when we started this program, the three-year graduation rate for our community colleges was 14%. It's now up to 25. You know, we're moving in the right direction. Now, 51%, we understand that that's the reason to celebrate because our, we know six years ago, our Dyersburg State graduation rate was 18%. Mm -hmm. And that number for uh, Black young men was 5%. Yes. So... Um, Fifty-one percent is is wonderful. That's exciting. Yeah, when we started the program um, in just in two thousand eight, if you required remedial coursework at a community college, the graduation rate was four um, percent. At the time, about eighty percent of our students required remedial coursework. Today, we're at about sixty-five percent. So, to think that we've moved it this far um, with a population that still comes in as fairly at risk, um, it's something to be proud of. But we got work to do. No doubt about it. Uh, on the right side of the slides here, you can see some of the things we're doing to impact these outcomes. So I talked about our summer programs earlier. Not only are they successful in what they're designed to do, which is prepare students for college, but the students that participate, the, participate in them increase their first year attention by 34%. So they start college more prepared and then they stay and ultimately graduate. If you are assigned a complete coach in our new coaching model, you increase your first year retention by 23%. Again, those are our lowest income students. Our Pell Grant recipients are the ones that receive a complete coach. And then we have uh, the newest part of our work is a program called Knox Promise. This is a private donation made by the Haslam family in Knoxville that does a couple of things for students there. First, they all get a coach. Regardless of their income, if you are a Knox County student that goes to college using Tennessee Promise, you get a coach that helps guide you through college. Second thing it does is it allows us to have what we call completion grant funding. You may know it more as like emergency grant funding, but we're able to pay. We have a about a $70,000 income cap for students in this program on, on the completion grant funding piece, but we're able to pay for students' books. We're able to pay for gas. Um, we have a, a system with Uber where we can make sure it only drives them from their house to the college campus. We can pay for that. We have food insecure students. We can pay their grocery bills. We had a student in Knoxville that um, her mom was homeless. She was living at home with her stepdad and seven or eight siblings. Um, they couldn't afford their utility bill. We paid that. We had a student who found herself in an abusive relationship and we paid for her transitional housing. So we're able to do a lot of things there. You can see that it increases the first year retention rate by 42%. Most of those students go to Pellissippi State Community College in Knoxville. And what we have heard from Pellissippi is that that is through the pandemic, that is the highest retaining cohort of any group they have on campus are the students that are going through this program. 
So it's showing a lot of promise. We have received, our legislature has given, uh, has earmarked a a $1 million four year pilot. So $250,000 a year that we can take this completion grant statewide. So Monday we emailed every single student in the state that was eligible. The income cap is much lower because we just don't quite have as much as the funds that we need. Um, but students that are zero EFC on their FAFSA, they got an email from us on Monday and um, we can provide completion grants. So we've been getting those all week. Dalton and his coworkers that are working on the coaching program, we've been going through those. Uh, got a text message from Chris this morning, said a student, somebody once said, quote, her fridge is empty. So we're going to help pay for some grocery bills. Um, we have a student who told us earlier this week that um, her mom and her new boyfriend have unfortunately developed a drinking and drug habit and she's staying with a friend and can't afford to drive to and from campus so we're going to help that student afford to drive to and from campus every day um, really excited about this opportunity we think it's the next iteration of our of our work if we can even move the retention and graduation rates just a little bit i think with two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year we can probably go back to the legislature and get more so we're really keeping them in the loop on what we're doing we need about $5 million a year if we want to do Knox Promise statewide, which would mean every student gets. Well, I wanted, I don't think we've shared with you that we have, I think we did share with you in the past that we do a small scholarship for Tipton County students, um, similar, but we have actually been able to raise that amount where it used to be $1,200. It's now $2,000 over um, either four semesters or five trimesters. So any Tipton County student, so th that's wonderful news. And we're so just to say that we're adding along to that, um, awesome. any Tipton County student, whether they be public school, private school, homeschool, um, have, can apply in the year they graduate. And it's there's no income cap on it. Anybody's eligible, as long as they are attending either a TCAP, a Tennessee Community College, or a public Tennessee four-year institution. We're doing $500 per semester, $400 per trimester, and it can be used for books. It can be used for gas to drive to class. It can be used for, you know, whatever, edu you know, they need to, to reach that educational goal, and yeah, we right. were able to raise that. We were very excited about that, and we're looking at whether we can do it for three years and add another year we're trying to decide and, and you might can give us some input on that whether it would be better to do the third year or to increase the amount a little bit during the four years during the two I'm sorry during over the course of the sure, sure. four semesters yeah you know that's a, a it's a great question I mean we could again we're we need like another year um in your county to really have good data to kind of see where we're losing students or where mm -hmm. they're going. So probably a year from now, we could probably give you a lot better feedback. Okay. Um, in terms well, of we're, following the data to see. We're not we're doing anything. We just, I just did this round of scholarships and I believe we did um, $72,000 of scholarships from summer TCAT students that graduated 2021 graduates and fall community college and four year. So wow, we did awesome. um, about 72, I, I processed about $72,000. We used to do it through a foundation and we had, mm -hmm. a, it, there were too many steps and it, there were students that weren't getting the money. And so we brought it in house and we actually do it through our budget and accounts department. And I, I process those scholarships and really all they have to do is apply. I mean. Okay. Um, so very cool. Yeah. If you have information on that, I can yeah. also get it. Um, Sorry, can I hop in there for a minute? Sure. This is Amanda Heath and I'm the vice president at TCAT Covenant. And I just want to say that that scholarship that is offered through our county has been very beneficial for our students. Um, I've been in financial aid for 22 years now. And um, we have students that really struggle with purchasing books and supplies and gas to get to and from school. And so that extra money from the county has been an extreme benefit to a lot of our students who, um, whose EFC is higher. While they may qualify for some Pell, it's not enough 
to mm -hmm. get the tuition and the books and supplies. Um, so that extra money in this county increasing that has been a big benefit for our students. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's awesome. Um, I know Obion County does something similar. I mean, any of those things, Robin, if you have information on like where we can direct students for that, I can give it to Esther Rowe as our coach that is working directly with your students um, so that we can make sure she's directing students to that. Okay, I will, I'll send that to you. We actually do it. It's just a link on our county website where they can apply now. It used to be paper and, and we just we started doing it virtually. But, sure. um, and then we, our guidance counselors and our, of course, you know, we have also have the paid mentors. Well, since we came from Ready and talking with Chrissy, we, we did, um, you know, we were glad y'all allowed us to kind of keep that portion. We're a little bit hybrid by having paid, um, we're calling them college access coaches since they're not Tennessee Chiefs. They are Tennessee Chiefs volunteer mentors also, but mm -hmm. um, since they are paid, we, we call them college access coaches and we have one at each high school. So they mm -hmm. try to reach out to those seniors and make sure they're applying. But, um, but I will, yes, I'm gonna make a note to send you the information and I'll get, send you some numbers so you can kind of see what, what we've done too. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really great. Sorry, I keep stopping your presentation. Oh, uh, this is, uh, I would so much rather have a conversation and chat up with you guys than me stare into the screen and talk on, on nonstop. So this is perfect. This is what this is designed to be. Um, ask away. So um, I will tell you, this is my least favorite slide in the presentation and you can see why here. Um, mostly good news or pretty much all good news until we get to this one. Uh, 2015, you can see is the year that Tennessee Promise was implemented Statewide, we increased the college going rate by 4.6%, which was more than you can see this seven previous years combined. Pretty steady uptick for a couple of years. We plateaued in 18 and 19. And then you see where COVID hit and all the gains that we made from 14 to 15, we lost in a year. Um, obviously, that's the COVID effect slide. You can see locally in Tipton, you didn't have um, quite the downturn that the state had, 4% as opposed to 5%. You're already above the state average. You're still above the state average. You know, it's not your specific county data is not the most worrisome that I've seen by any stretch. I did Murray County yesterday, which is Columbia. So a pretty large county, and they had a almost 12% decline. You know, that's probably... Wow education emergency status. Uh, as far as you know, there is such a thing as an education emergency. Um, I will tell you in 2021, based on early enrollment numbers that we're getting from the colleges across the sea, it looks like we're going to be stuck right where we were in 2020. So we're going to, you know, keep working really hard to make sure that we keep these numbers up. Robin, you mentioned those, um, the college access counselors. I think you're above the state average because they're there. I think you stayed above the state average, saw less effect than most other counties because you have that additional resource that other counties don't have. There's no doubt that having those people in the schools every single day um, is hugely beneficial. So here's what we're doing to tackle that. And, and here's where we need continue to need um, help from all the communities that we serve. Our mentors are our biggest college going resources for us. Um, they are working with small groups of students, helping to alleviate those barriers. There's 31 of us on staff now for uh, the person who is staff member number two when there were only two full-time staff members. It's shocking that we have 31 people, but 31 people and 60,000 high school students every year, it's still a numbers game that we're going to lose. So we do need 9,000 mentors across the state serving these three roles. So that task manager role, making sure they're staying on track, that they're meeting their deadlines. I always say making progress towards college while remaining eligible for promise. Second, that trusted family resource they can reach out to when they have questions, when they need help, get a letter from financial aid and they don't know what it means. And then finally, I think the most important role over the last 12 years, and certainly as we continue to navigate fairly uncertain times, is just that encouragement piece that like, hey, you can do this. And yes, there's some uncertainty in the world. And yes, it's challenging. And I always say, you know, anyone who has ever been to college before has struggled at some point in time, right? Like I really struggled in the math class. Other students struggle with papers. Other students are going to work full time, going to class full time. Um, next year, mentoring in 2022, it's 
going to look a little different than it looked this year, which looked significantly different than it has looked um, the previous 12 years. So if you mentor with us this year, you know that we invested in the virtual platform called Connect. Um, really, really positive feedback from our mentors on that. We know that there's been some challenges getting students to use it, but um, you can do the uh, virtual meetings. You can still call, email, and text. It also provides that layer of tracking your students we've never had before. So you can see when they are applying, when they enroll full time, when they send their community service hours, you see it as soon as we see it. So uh, really good feedback on that. That's gonna hang with us next year. If you remember the meetings we did previously where we used to bring all the students in the school together in the cafeteria, we're not gonna go back to that. Um, but two thirds of our mentors this year told us that they want an in-person option. So we are going to host what we are calling um, an open house for students and mentors. We're gonna to try to utilize college campuses across Tennessee for this. In some counties, we may have to uh, you know, go back to a high school if there isn't a large space on a college campus. But um, essentially what we're gonna do is block off three or four hours, invite the students and mentors to come meet in person. We will have a staff member there to answer questions, but no formal presentation or anything like that. We are hoping that the colleges will also send some staff, maybe with computers, so student can, students can apply. Um, if they've applied, we can find out where exactly they are in the application process. We can complete those admissions files. Um, so far, the colleges seem really excited about them. The mentors that we've talked to seem excited about it. And then we're also just going to encourage mentors to get to meet with their students um, on their own. We've never really encouraged that before, but we do know it happens. Randy takes his students for pizza every year. We had a mentor this summer who actually uh, essentially set up her own summer bridge program in her front yard. She had her student come over, they sat outside so that it was safe, and she pretty much tutored her to get ready for the placement exam. So we know that it is happening and we're gonna just encourage that at a level we never have before. Um, you can see locally, we need 110 people. We came up a little bit short of that this year. I think being our second year in Tipton County and being unable to come and visit and just get in front of the community members, you know, really hurt us there. Um, again, there's some COVID effect slides in here, and I think that's one of them. I think we got to about 90, um, and I think we made it work, but would certainly um, love any help we can to kind of get back to it. And, and that's kind of other places where you can help us here. Um, Robin, you've done, you've been great about helping us find these people and getting us connected in your communities, but if you have those opportunities for us to come and present to active community members, we're ready, we're willing. Um, I was just in Ripley a couple of weeks ago at their Rotary Club and picked up a pretty good number of mentors from that. So anything we can do to come and um, find those people, right. we're ready for you. But that's really all that I have for you. So I'm going to, here's all my contact information for anyone that needs it and a little student story here, but I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then any other questions, comments, or feedback we can uh, we can all chat about. I, that's great information and it's, um, I mean, and, and again, like you said, a, a 4% drop in college schooling rate is, is concerning for us, but we understand, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's been a difficult year and, Mm -hmm. We're glad that that's out. Yeah, we're glad that it's not any worse than it is. And I think oh, it is. it's um, I Brandon good. Armstrong has joined us. He is one of our college access coaches at Brighton High School. Cool. And he does a wonderful job working. And, you know, he's, he's with these students every day. Um, they've all, hey, there man. he is. Um, I went in the school. Schools. I went to all three schools last week, I guess, and they were already working on Tennessee uh, Promise applications with their students. Um, Brandon was uh, Mario Hayslet at Covington and um, Bryant Ariasa at Munford. So they've, you know, we're we're getting our students to apply. And from that number, Brandon, I don't know if you were on in time to see the number of students uh, that when you showed that slide of how many completed the application and how many enrolled. But we go at it with the attitude of we want every student to apply, even Absolutely. if they're not sure what they're going to do, because we know plans change. Brandon can say he's had students that come to him because they they just, you know, it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going out of state. I'm going out of state. And then mm -hmm. they miss the mm -hmm. deadlines. And then or they or we get them to complete the application, but they miss the other deadlines, you know, the things they have to do. And um then 
something happens and they come back and go, hey, can I get that now? You know, mm -hmm. we have to say no. Uh, I mean, we encourage every student in Tennessee to apply. And your uptake is actually higher than the state average. So I think we were at about 700 applicants and 200 of which went. Um, I'm, as I mentioned in the presentation, not a math guy, but uh, statewide, about 26% of students that apply go. So I know that 200 out of 700 is better than that. So it's, it, we encourage every student to apply. Um, and if they go somewhere else, that is fantastic. We don't care where they go, we just want them to go, right? Right. Hey, can can you explain? I caught the the end of the Tipton County numbers. I think it was like 64, 60 percent, somewhere in there. What was that stat about specifically? Can we pull this thing back up? Here. That was Brandon. It was the dip in the college going right oh. in 2020. And we had been the year before in 2019, we were at 64 percent and we dropped down to 60 percent. But he was saying that we we still are above the state average. So mm -hmm. we dropped, but we didn't drop as much as some areas. Is that from Tennessee Promise eligible students or just students all across the board? That's every, so that, that comes from the Department of Ed. So that is every student in the county, regardless gotcha. if they applied for Tennessee Promise, used Tennessee wow. Promise. Okay. I mean, again, you're, you're outpacing the state. You were outpacing the state before. Statewide, we saw a 5% dip. Locally, you saw a 4% dip. I mean, it's, it's not exciting news, but it, it could be worse. Uh, I was telling them Murray County was at almost 12, um, which is a large county. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, I mean, it, it, it comes straight back to COVID. I mean, there's just no two ways around that. But yeah. Um, we need to get back up there in that low to mid 60s range where we where we have been and, and we will. So I heard you say something and um, I have not seen it. I would like to see it because maybe I can communicate it to some more um, mentors about the connect. You call it connect. I guess that's a what is that a virtual? Is that an app? Is that something? What is that? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's web based. It is a it, it's an online platform that we invested in it. It kind of looks like um, like Facebook with a video chat feature. Um, so that's how students and mentors were working together this year since we knew we couldn't get them together safely, certainly not in large groups. Um, and so all their students are housed there. They get updates on them. Like I said, they get in real time when they apply, when they're enrolled full time, they see their community service hours live um, and just really a, a new layer of support. So. We, we spent quite a bit of money on that platform, so it will be with us. We'll keep using it for a while. All right. Anyone else? Well, I thank you all for making the time to come this morning and learn about your local data. Um, we've been saying it for years. We're really only as successful as the counties that we serve allow us to be, and so we're just so appreciative of your support. And Robin, you've been our go-to, and um, wish we had a Robin in every county it would make our work a lot easier. So appreciate everything that all of you do for us. Well, thanks. We are, we're excited. Um, I mean, we know it's difficult. We just kind of started with y'all and then everything hit, but I, I, I think that, um, our students are definitely been benefiting from being part of, you know, for having Tennessee Achieves partner with us and we will definitely hit it harder on, um, I'll, I'll go to y'all's social media and pull, I know y'all got things up, um, encouraging people to be mentors and we'll start sharing that heavily and um, I will send you some contact information for some of our local civic organization and things so that if you want to um, try to reach out and if you're going to be some you know if you're close by and you want to kind of hit two places let me know and I'll try to find somebody to put you in front of you know if you're as close as Ripley and you want to try to hit another um time to get somebody here i'll see if i can find something absolutely we can do that okay thank you we appreciate awesome. yeah, time. Absolutely. thank you yeah have a good one you too mm -hmm.